Hey guys, what is up? As you already probably guessed, today we are installing an aux beam eight gang switch panel into the fourth gen forerunner. Um, I've been looking forward to this one. My wiring is a mess in my forerunner. Show you guys what came in the box. This is the eight ganger. Got it off Amazon because I didn't want to get it anywhere else. First of all, we got the switch itself. This is a blue LED. I got the blue LED one. Um, has all these stickers to put on it. Everything from light bars to uh, my favorite one. Where is it? The fish box. Uh, we got tons of stuff. We're going to wire all that up. We got some brackets, some zips, um, some battery cables, the fuse box itself with built-in relay so we can cut all the uh, old fuses and relays out of our lights. Why did I get this? You're probably wondering, oh man, why would you spend money? Look at this. This is terrible. This is how I have all my wiring. My wiring. <laughs> my wiring right now. Uh, I just got the wires coming down. Got a little bolt bracket here. Um, some relays everywhere. Some fuses. It looks like a mess. I really need to clean this battery up. Um, if you look inside, <laughs> I got my lazy switches, my clears, ambers, and ditch lights. I'm also planning to actually put on some uh, chase lights in the back, maybe some rock lights. I got a bumper build that is in the process right now, so I'll be putting some more lights on. So why am I doing this? Because I need the space and I need to clean it up. So what we're going to be doing today in this video is doing just that. We are going to clean up my existing electrical mess in here, install this system, and see how it works. I am not sponsored by Oxbeam or Oxpower. I did not get a deal on this thing. Um, so this is just going to be my raw thoughts on it. So far, I'm liking the look of this. It should be pretty easy to install. I've watched a few videos. Pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah. So anyways, follow along as I install this Oxbeam 8 gang switch panel system into the 4th Gen 4Runner. All right, so first thing is first, uh, I'm just figuring out how I'm going to wire this in. So this is probably going to sit on top of my uh, fuse box in my engine bay, probably like so. Um, has easy access to all the wires that way, also pretty close to the battery. Out of the way, pretty natural place to put it. I was thinking about making a plastic bracket. I think I actually just might drill it straight into here. Uh, checking if there's enough clearance, of course, and we're not destroying anything that's already in there. Um, I'm going to double check that, but that's my initial thought. Then, of course, we have the positive to the uh, battery, the negative to the battery. Pretty straightforward. We have uh, just a little bit of a master power switch cable here. So this we're going to put into uh, accessory power, so the AC power probably within the uh, driver's side fuse box. I'm just going to piggyback on one of those fuses. Uh, pretty straightforward. That's to make sure it doesn't stay on when the truck is off. It's only on when accessory power is, so when your key is put to accessory. Keeps you from draining your battery. After we do that, um, I'm going to figure out all my connections. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this apart. So I'm actually going to take uh, just some clips. Pew, pew, pew. Loosen all that up. Take the batteries off. Take the, sorry, the battery clips off. Look at everything I got. Probably going to cut out the relays and fuses out of these. And then I'm going to wire it into the switch panel. Once we get there, we are going to pull the uh, switch panel cord connected to there. Pull it through the firewall down there. We're going to take those old switches out. Uh, once we do that, we're going to pull it through into here, and we're going to find out where we're going to mount it. I originally was thinking maybe on this panel. I don't know if the weight can support it with the stock bracket, so we're going to see and hold up on that. Um, there's a few other places it could go. Like, it could drill into there. I could put it, like, right here. Maybe not the worst area to put it. That way, like, the passenger can hit it, too, if you need. You can access it from both doors, which might not be the worst thing ever. But uh, yeah, we have a few mounting options. So that'll probably be the last thing we do is mounting it. So to start, uh, I'm going to get started on just making sure I have all the pieces that I need. And then I'm going to start cutting. And I'll show you guys what I do as I go. Okay, so a little update, guys, on what I've done here. Um, I have the accessory um, power cable right now. I'm just extending it. I took some of my uh, red wire from another light. And I'm just going to solder this really quick, put a little connector on there. And uh, other than that, though, I actually went ahead and just drilled some really small holes in the fuse box cover. I'm going to end up um, welding a little bracket that connects to that bolt down there and then that bolt. And then it's going to hold the panel right here. But for the meantime, I just put it on top of the fuse box. Um, it works there. So we got the stock bracket there. And then, yeah, so that's what I decided to do for that one. Um, right now, 
I'm just working on, yeah, the accessory power. I'm going to hook everything up, make sure it works. I'm going to use the ditch lights as a template. And then we're going to get to the extreme LED light bar. I have no idea how I'm going to hook this up. So upon closer inspection, I realized one of the switches on the panel was actually broken. All right, and just like that, I got everything finished, <laughs> at least for wiring. Uh, I took a few days. I have a cold. Sorry if this is a little bit nasally. I feel like I always film when I'm sick. Anyways, I had this problem because I had this extreme LED light bar, and no matter what was happening, I couldn't hook it up, and then it occurred to me the fuse panel wasn't working. So here's the crappy part. This fuse panel only works for seven out of eight switches. Works, works, works. Does not work. I pulled the fuse because whenever I go to this one, it's continually on. For some reason, it's looping power to this. It's bypassing the switch. Everything is wrong with this one switch. On this side, these all work. And so how do I have it wired up? You're probably wondering. Well, I cut out the relays. I cut out the fuses. I have my extreme LED wire coming down here. Um, the shared ground is a black wire. It goes there. And then I have the power wire for the ambers. It goes into there. Because it shares a ground, it's already grounded out. And then I have the power wire to the clear light bar going here. Um, to simplify this, you share a ground. Power. Power. Every time I turn the switch on, it completes the circuit. It's already grounded out, right? Clears. Ambers. Ditch lights down here. So, if I touch my ambers, they come on. If I touch the light bar, it comes on. If I touch fish box, it doesn't come on because fish box is my stupid switch that doesn't work ox beam come on then over here got our windshield cubes pretty simple to install um so yeah that's how i routed it i have no extra relays or fuses straight to here you can see this one more time i'm going to close that now um and then i ran the master control switch boop, 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 through my fuse panel or through my firewall into my fuse panel as you can see it goes down here and then I have two fuses in here. You need two fuses, one to complete the circuit with the fuse panel, and then one to complete the circuit back to the uh, fuse panel itself. Sorry, two fuse panels here, you know what I mean. One fuse goes to the engine bay up, up to the aux beam switch panel. Another one just goes here, so it completes the circuit within the fuse box. I've tapped this in right between the 15 and the 15. This is your ACC circuit. This is just an accessory circuit. Um, it's on when your car is in the on position. Um, it's empty to start with, so you can put it here. I also had success going through the 7.5 here. But yep, that all works. And so my next step now is just taking this thing and finding out where I want to put it. I'm not too sure yet, but I'm going to show you guys once I figure it out. Okay, so I just finished setting everything up. Uh, this is the same as you saw it before. Got everything going through the firewall then. And look at this. We got the final product. I ended up using the uh, the backing that allows you to pivot a little bit. All I did here, screwed in just below here. Check behind. I have no wires. This is just trim behind here. So I did some nice little shallow screws. Got this. Wire actually ends up going through the uh, fuse panel box cover anyway. So that works out really well. Sweet. I'm going to end up probably uh, adding in some uh, chase lights and then some other stuff in here as well. So... Stay tuned for that, but for now, guys, uh, the aux beam switch panel, not the hardest thing to install when it works. Uh, because I had that missing uh, switch, uh, I was trying to wire in the whole time into that one, and it kept staying on, and I was like, what is wrong with me? I think I know what I'm doing, but that was a little bit annoying. And so because of that, I cannot give this, uh, hey, totally recommend this, definitely go out and get it. Seems like there's some product. Look at that. It's even flashing a little bit here. We're just getting some inconsistencies in the wiring and everything. So a decent product. Decently made. Uh, the usability is up there. How long this is going to last, I'm not too sure. I'm going to try it for a bit. I'll let you guys know in a few months how this holds up. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm on the fence. I'm not too sure how I feel about this. But uh, anyways, guys, hope you're well. This is going to be the end of the video. Thanks so much for the support. We just hit 350 subs. That is crazy. I'm stoked about that. And so until next time, guys, peace.